Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Shakira Isoma Maramli and my metric number is 1724272. So today I will be presenting on my topic on Homo economicus and Homo islamicus, the title of behavioral economics. So essentially, um, my paper will consist of five parts, which is introduction, literature review, adaptation, a potential setback, and lastly, the conclusion. Moving on to my introduction. So in my introduction, I was going through the notion of how conventional economists per perceive uh, economic agent, so rational being, to be making rational decision. However, this doesn't correlate to the behaviors of a human and therefore and it places with the point that a conventional economies neglects um, the the values of ethics and religious therefore we are find, trying to find um, a closer match to uh, islamic economies so going forward into the paper i would like to emphasize two main questions which is is behavioral economics um, closer to Islamic economics and how do we adapt it in real life? And last but not least, my goal of writing this paper is to see whether behavioral economics will be the way forward to a moral economic and sustainable economic. My literature review um, talks on both sides, which is conventional literature and also the Islamic literature. So we'll start with the conventional literature. In summary, or in general, the conventional re literature really, really believes that economic agent will be rational and they are ought to be rational. However, the behavioral economic concept was being introduced, um, they, they, they realize that humans are They're very short-sighted in terms of seeing their goal, in terms of seeing consequences of their actions, right? So being myopic plus with their behavioral, they ought to not be rational. And behavioral economics at the site of um, conventional, conventional sites um, was popularized by Richard Thaler. Richard Thaler is a Nobel Prize winner and he was deemed as a father of uh, behavioral economics. was uh, being uh, deemed as father of, um, of behavioral economics. I referred a lot to his work um, in terms of conventional thoughts, right? So one very, very pertinent point that he mentioned now is that our brain has two types of system, which is number one is an, eco an automatic system and number two is a reflective system. So automatic system is a system whereby we as a human um, uh, um, makes the de decision objectively because that kind of, is, um, of decision has its own formula, its own answers, whilst the reflective system of our brain reacts to something or makes a decision based on empirical Your own statistics. experiences on that field. And I also quoted a literature from Daniel Ariely in the Harvard Business Review as saying that um, the irrationality of human mind or human behavior are the real invisible hand that people have been talking about since Adam Smith, which is the laziest fair. And um, this is all due and owing to the cognitive behavior or cognitive ability of human so in making decisions. Review, I reviewed uh, a few articles from the Islamic perspective. And number one, I reviewed the Tafer, Bushmeen, and Boamin. I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, but their article is rather interesting. They talk about perception. So perspe perception can be altered um, by past experiences and empirical um, empirical evidence, right? Um, and they also talk about how Islamic doctrine does not reject self-interest, but rather within that self-interest and within that variety of goal and desire, there is 
um, an emphasis on society um, society improvement and society advancement. While Quran in 1983 um, talks about how implementation of behavioral economics would reduce the constraints the cost of constraint in rational economy. I talk about the adaptation of behavioral economics and option. We are looking in the perspective of um, behavioral economics being implemented in action. And mainly, uh, mainly I will be referring to two um, articles, which is from Asad Zaman and Dan Ariely. National economics uh, perspective, I am referring to Dan Ariely articles. And in this article, he talks about the concept of meta theories. So, what is meta theories? Meta theories is essentially when psychology and behavior um, affect uh, the interpretation of one's mind. Dan Ariely says to practitioner or people who wanted to engage in behavior economic approach, they must recognize that this concept is rather new and rather uh, frail. So it will take a lot of effort, time and patience. Um, and once you have accepted the underlying irrationality of behavioral approach, you can now implement it successfully and wisely and, and make a wiser decision. Um, next in the paper, I talk about the reinforcer pathology model, which talks about how valuation of certain things differs from individuals to another individuals. And in this model also talks about delay discount. So what delay discount is essentially how people change their perspective in terms of times because we are short-sighted. We only look for the immediate consequences, which means that what I decide today might not be what I decide tomorrow because the future that I'm deciding tomorrow does not include uh, the future that I'm I'm looking at. Um, by today because it it delays and, um, then Ariely also talks about three main adaptation which is from the pricing of product uh, product launching and also customer relations adaptation in Islamic economics approach is rather new work because um, this concept behavioral economics have not been it, have been an unspoken concept uh, therefore there's not much research on it so in reality human behavior are neither conventional nor islamic therefore he highlighted that in islamic economy there is two aspects that we have to uh, emphasis on which is which is number one moderation and spiritual and emotional approach of things so instead of maximizing utilities such as the rational economics or conventional economics have emphasis, Islamic economics finds the middle ground. Finds next on the paper, I talk about the potential setback of implementing uh, behavioral e economy. So number one is cognitive skill and biases. So once um, humans start using their once humans start using their cognitive behavior, they tend to conform to uh, a group because now you share the same cognitive um, thinking. And it will start to neglect individual ideas and start to disregard them. In assessing behavior economic approach, um, I, I had posed a question of do Muslim behave accordingly to Islamic economics assumption? I realize that we don't live in an in an ideal um, world. Therefore, there will be barriers and mishap when we are implementing it, uh, implementing Islamic economic per se, and also economic um, as in, in general. Um, from what I have observed, Islamic state or Islamic government's lack of Islamic economic governance in their state uh, state affairs um, um, as i observe um, these states tend, tend to neglect islamic economics um, values and had adopted uh, conventional economics therefore muslim does not behave accordingly to islamic economics assumption in concluding my paper I believe that behavior economics uh, approach um, could be implemented whether it's in the conventional or Islamic uh, economics 
uh, to develop a way forward to moral economy or a sustainable economy. And in Islamic economics, I believe that as long as we follow all the guidelines given from our primary sources, the Quran and the Sunnah, uh, we will be able to implement it successfully. My own point of view of suggestions on how how we could further um, realize the implementation of behavior economics that is to integrate the inter Islamic economics and also a conventional economics. This way and this integration will help us to eradicate selfishness and also it will help us to reduce the constraint of rationality um, as, as imposed in the rational economic. Last but not least, I hope a further development could be done by researchers uh, of Islamic economics uh, in the approach of behavioral economics. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.